So one of our young people here in Holy Family uh, used to work in the hotel industry and we have a little chalkboard in our dining room in case there's any dietary issues or we have to indicate if there are peanuts in a meal or something. So uh, this, this uh, guy in our community often writes his favorite scripture verse, which we read today, which is Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. So this is often written, you know, come and have breakfast, John 21, uh, verse 9, I think it is, verse 9 or 10, uh, his favorite scripture verse. So what I love about this gospel is, uh, I'm sure it's, it's, it's fairly apparent also from yesterday's gospel, how <clears throat> normal Jesus is on one hand. On one hand, like he's, he's, he's so uh, one of the guys. Right, as in he's able to speak to them. And uh, we also have to keep in mind, though, that Jesus is never just one of the guys. Okay, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting balance to try and maintain. Jesus, he's, in his human nature, he's, he's human. <laughs> so he gets hungry and he gets tired and he has a laugh with, 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 his, with his disciples. And he felt, he, he cried, he felt pain, all those things, very, very, just kind of like, just like us, right? But on the other hand, so very, very different from us as well, you know? Like, he is God incarnate. We're not. We're really, really not. Uh, he, he knows all things. I mean, all things were created through him. I mean, we can't even begin to imagine what, that, what that's like. So, but at the same time, he, he is very, very... I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating to say the word ordinary because we, we can't stay there. I mean, it, it's both. Okay, it's truly God and truly man, but, but truly man. Truly man, just truly man, and truly God. So let's try and keep these, these, these two together. It's not always easy because it becomes very, very easy, especially over the last number of decades, 30, 40 years, to underline uh, almost exclusively Jesus' humanity, so much so that Jesus is only a good preacher, teacher, healer, uh, philosopher, uh, religious founder, whatever, but, but, but just from a hu merely, merely human perspective which greatly reduces this incredible and essential reality of the incarnation, God becoming man. God becoming man, not a mere man doing some nice things. So we have these two things to, to maintain. So the, 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 the disciples after the, 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 the tragedy and the, the joy then of meeting the Lord, they're a bit out of sorts. They don't really know what to do with themselves. Um, the, we thought there was going to be this great big change in Israel and, and Jesus would kind of lead us all back and restore, establish the, the, the kingdom. And so now he's, he, he died and he rose and he's kind of appearing to us on occasion, but what are we supposed to do exactly? What, 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 what do we do now? So you can imagine just Simon, Simon Peter saying, well, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I know. I mean, if you were a farmer, I'm going back to hunting the cows. I'm going back to, you know, I'll go back to what I know. So off they go. They all go off fishing for a day trip uh, on the lake with, with, with the apostles. And it's all good. Okay, no fishing, no catch that night. And within the sea, Jesus, something impedes them from recognizing him. And then the miraculous haul of fish at Jesus' command. Peter hauls the net ashore. And again, the ordinariness of this. Jesus cooks them breakfast. I just, I, it's, it's just, it's so amazing like, that Jesus takes care of these entirely unnecessary details. Right? They, they would have survived without breakfast or they could have made breakfast themselves. They didn't need God incarnate to cook them breakfast. But he does. So it's, it, again, it's, it's, it's not an easy balance to maintain and we don't want to fall either side. But, but Jesus, he's taking care here of, of a small little detail. He's got a charcoal fire. He's got some fresh bread. And then he asks them to bring some of the fish that they've <clears throat> caught, just caught. So fresh fish. Charcoal fire is ready. We'll get the thing gutted and away we go. We're cooking breakfast. It's, so he, he, Jesus takes care of the ordinary things of our lives too which I think is, is a very, very important lesson, that Jesus is actually interested in the ordinary details of your life. The, like the, 
the, it's not just what your, what's your vocation, who are you going to marry, <clears throat> these huge questions. But the, in the ordinary things, the, the, the daily things, like, Lord, you know, today, I, I know people like, who have um, such a, a wonderful kind of daily friendship with the Lord that even when, they're, when they go into town, driving around, they're like, Lord, I really need a parking space near Tesco's because I just I have to get in and then I have to go to the pharmacy next door. So a parking space it would be great. And then out reverses a car. Thank you, Lord. And in they pop. Like those kind of almost ridiculous things. But why couldn't Jesus, why can't, why wouldn't Jesus take care of those things? Why wouldn't he? he can he? Of course he can. It's never a case of can he. But it, 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 this is Jesus getting breakfast ready for us. It's like um, sometimes people can, can come to me with questions maybe about feeling a small bit guilty about having, say for example, a bottle of wine with their meal. You know, they're like, you know, are we allowed to have, have wine? Because you know, there, there, are, there are poor and, and starving people here in you know, other countries and I mean, am I allowed to have like a third pair of shoes or a second or third handbag? I mean, is, is that exaggerated or is, is that okay? So I think it, in our, we have to be careful, in our faith, it's always it's not either or, it's both and. So yes, we can actually have a nice meal, sharing some time together as friends or as family, absolutely. We don't have to feel guilty every time we have a dessert. Uh, and we help the poor. It's not one or, one or the other, it's one and the other. We, we have to put, if we can, or if, if there are people we know who need a visit, or we see someone who we can help, and money isn't always the, the best way to help, but that's another issue. Uh, we can and do help, but we shouldn't feel guilty for, for having a balanced amount of, of nice things, as long as we're not attached to them. As long as everything that we have glorifies God, we don't have to, to, to feel guilty for having... Uh, nice food and, and a nice home okay or you can go on the, on the occasional holiday right so Jesus takes care of the ordinary things and is interested in the ordinary things none of them was bold enough to ask who are you they knew quite well it was the Lord so Jesus stepped forward took the bread and gave it to them and the same with the fish now, if, if this taking the bread and giving it to them, if that's not ringing bells, I think we really have to start at the beginning of the catechism again, okay? Jesus taking bread <clears throat> and giving it to them. So, if we go right back to <clears throat> Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had everything they needed, but everything that they needed from God, they received as a gift, right? So the garden was given to them for free. They didn't dig it, they didn't plant anything. The, the fruit of the tree, it's, it's, it's given to them in the sense that, you know, they, they can eat from all of the trees, all of the bushes, all of the plant, <coughs> seed-bearing plants. <coughs> <Excuse me> <coughs> everything was theirs. They received everything from God. And everything starts to go pear-shaped as soon as they take something. So rather than trusting God as, as their father, as, as their provider, they take something that he said not to. So it's, it's a very simple little command. You can eat everything and anything you want, apart from this, the, fruit, the fruit of this one tree. And then when they're tempted, it's not because they're hungry. The tempter says, if you eat this fruit, you will be like gods. You will be like gods, knowing good from evil. Yourselves, subjectively. And so rather than, again, receiving everything from God or going back to God with this question, God, um, we heard that we could be more like you if we ate this fruit. And what would God have answered? I already created you in my image and likeness. You are already like me. You can already love. You can already freely choose. These are things that make you like me. You don't need that fruit. You don't need the knowledge of evil. You don't need it. It hasn't entered the world. It hasn't entered your hearts. You don't need it. You don't need to tell a four-year-old what genocide is or all these horrific crimes that go on. You don't have to, like, they don't need to know. It's, it's, it's okay for them to be innocent at that point. <clears throat> so they don't need a knowledge of evil, but they take it. So Jesus here, he, 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 he takes the bread, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. And this is such a, a life lesson for all of us and again 
it's a, a theme that I seem to be coming back to all the time, the idea of balance. Uh, that, that the law will provide, but yet we have to put in our 20% of the work too. I mean, we, we have to do our bit. There's no point sitting down in your living room, the comfort of your own home, on your armchair, with a nice big bottle of Coke beside you, and your 15th bag of Doritos on the other side, and say, the Lord is going to give me everything I need. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, he's going to give me a degree in engineering. Uh, no, he's not. No, he's not. If you want a degree in engineering, you got to study, because you don't deserve a degree in engineering doing that. you got a degree in obesity. That's all you're going to get. So, so like, while, yes, the Lord provides, we have to do, we have to do our bit, which is, which is good. So the Lord provides, but maybe the way he has provided for you to get your degrees, he's given you the noggin to do it. He's given you the intelligence to do it. Now do it. But the Lord still provides, you know. So the Lord gives us everything we need to create a happy life around us. All the, all the abilities he's already provided. He has already given what you need for today. So we have to now use it. So like the Lord gives you the bread, uh -huh. you still have to put it into your mouth, chew it, and swallow it. So he's done all the hard work. All the hard work is done by him. You just have to do the last little bit. So the Lord gives, like the Lord gives us a beautiful plan for all the resources that we need. He gives it to us and now asks us to, to use it. He's done all the hard work. But the Lord gives. So we never, ever need to take from him. Taking something from God, generally speaking, probably always will be a sin. If I take something. So, like, God, I want to be happy. I know you have your little plan for my happiness. I have my plan for my happiness. I kind of prefer my plan for my happiness. So I'm going to take what I need to achieve this plan for my happiness that invariably will lead to sin. Okay, whatever that is, like superficial relationships, drinking, alcoholism, um, uh, addiction, taking happiness rather than waiting for, for God to provide it. And again, when I say provide it, it doesn't mean that we sit down and do nothing. We still have to do <coughs> the last 20, 20%, but it's all a gift. Then everything, my Spanish holiday, my, my degree, my wife and children, my new home, I see everything as a gift. Everything was given to me by God. And I return everything to God. Praise be the name of the Lord. And if we live like that, then every day, every, everything we see and have glorifies God because it's all a gift. It's all a gift. So we thank the good Lord for his providence, for his love. We thank him for the attention he has to detail, to the small things, to the, even the unnecessary things. We thank him for his invitation today, in whatever way this, this applies to your life, this invitation of the Lord. Come and have breakfast.